Hello, and thank you for joining us for a conversation about how architecture matters in a cyber resilient world. And for that conversation, I'm very happy to have my friend Marcus along with me today because Marcus spends a lot of his, his time um, talking to data center customers and in particular to the application people because varying applications, I, you know, I, I know Marcus, a lot of times people tend to think of the application base as sort of this, you know, uniform thing that they can provision equally, but that's not really how applications uh, work or live in, in, in a real data center environment. No, I think everybody's looking to have sort of a, a default infrastructure where they can just apply every application. But when we look at the application and how important it is to the organization or the business, there's always a classification that happens. And in general, it's three buckets, right? It's mission critical applications, it's business critical applications, and then non-critical applications. Of course, certain organizations can sort of subdivide within those mm -hmm. categories. And often they will call them T0, T1, and then maybe T2, 3, 4, or whatever. Um, and when we look at those, what does that really mean? Well, if an application is mission critical, it means that the organization or the business is really completely at risk if that mm -hmm. application is not available, mm -hmm. or it could also be someone who's dependent on the application is at risk. Mm -hmm. In most severe cases, human life is at risk. Mm -hmm. And then if we look at the business critical application, well, when the business critical, critical application is not running uh, you know, as expected or is disrupted, well, then the business is not running as mm -hmm. expected. Consequences of that could be financial loss. Uh, it could be uh, exposure of maybe uh, sensitive information, right? If you have mm -hmm. a data breach or something mm -hmm. like that. It could also be not being able to take advantage of an opportunity. Uh, we earlier talked about you know, the Taylor Swift concert, where if the ticketing system melts down when everybody's trying to buy the ticket, well, then that ticket agent loses out on the opportunity to make a lot of revenue mm -hmm. because their business critical application was down or not performing as it should. Yeah, and I think you know one of the things that that's, that strikes to me about that is um, we have an, a large number of customers in healthcare, right? And it's and it's mission critical for the the healthcare data to be there, for the medical records to be there, as they're de determining what um, treatments to to give to a patient. You want to know everything about the patient that's in that's in front of you, and you know they may not be conscious to to tell you about it, right? So there's 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 gradations in there where things matter differently to to, to different application bases. So. That's that seems that seems pretty straightforward. But then, when you're looking at the the architecture of, of you know fiber channel SANS, which is part of what what we're going to talk about today, right? What makes fiber channel SANS different than um, other technologies around that? Like what what was the you know what was the, the base set that that sort of got got us there? Yeah, I think if you look at how fiber channel SANS were developed, uh, you know, the fiber channel SAN is really originally mimicking an internal bus architecture mm -hmm. and taking that to a more scalable level and deploying that as a fabric. So you're able to scale with multiple uh, devices, you know, host and storage, being able to communicate on that uh, fabric. Mm -hmm. um, and then secondly, to ensure that there is high availability and redundancy, best practice has always been to deploy with redundant fabrics. So that is really very different, I would say, mm -hmm. when you look at storage networking uh, technologies out there. Fiber channel is very unique in that way that first of all, it mimics this internal bus architecture, which means that all communication is point to point. Mm -hmm. So if there is a data breach, a server is breached, uh, that server cannot sniff on that storage network mm -hmm. and gather information about, okay, where are all the other servers, where are all the other storage arrays or targets and then start attacking that. It only has access to what it's provisioned to, mm -hmm. to access that host. Yeah. Um, and, and so as, as we look at uh, and we have these discussions about you know, what technology should you architect with when you look at your infrastructure, fiber channel is very unique in, in that situation. And I think it's also important to remember that, that as you as you describe, you know, in the in the growth of that to to scale out to a fabric, the characteristics that existed in that connectivity to begin with are things that we retain, right? So the lossless nature, 
the low latency, the deterministic delivery of, of, of traffic and so on. And those can be extremely critical to, to the application base, right? Depending on what the applications are. But, you know, in particular, as you, as you point out at the mission critical level and the business critical level, those characteristics, I think, tend to, tend to be things that absolutely still have to be there, even at scale, even, even when you're talking about 10,000 plus ports in a fiber channel sand fabric, you know, those characteristics still have to be there, right? But in, but in order to take advantage of that, then you also need to be able to see what's going on, right? Isn't that, wouldn't that be another uh, piece that you have to have? Yeah, I think we all, I think it's very clear that of course for your mission and business critical applications, you want them to run as fast and as smoothly as possible. So yes, low latency, deterministic performance, all those things. Uh, but at the same time, we know that when you are on a fabric or on a network, there can be congestion. Congestion yeah. does happen. Uh, or it could be that uh, you know there is resource overload, right? A device is not mm -hmm. able to handle the traffic in a timely manner, and others get impacted. Or an Oracle database administrator who stripes his read requests across too many ports. Yeah, yeah. for example, there, yeah. there could be issues like that. And so, in those situations, right? We've over the last ten years, we really instrumented the fiber channel network to not only being able to identify this, mm -hmm. uh, but also automatically alert on you know threshold violations as well as autonomously um, you know mitigate or sometimes completely resolve the problem without the application or application owner even noticing because it happens underneath the covers and mm -hmm. so quickly that the application is actually not impacted by it and i think that's one of the one of the key differentiators too is that um, other other types of technologies won't even know that a problem is occurring yet by the time we've already mitigated um, an issue like a congested uh, port or a slow drain device. Correct, and I think that's, we have, if you look at how fiber channel really is architected from the ground up, it's very proactive, right? Mm -hmm. You don't send any data unless you know that you can actually deliver it without dropping it. Mm -hmm. And as we then look at all the other things that we build around the uh, capability of monitoring and, and analyzing, it's very different than when you look at other network technologies, right? Other network technologies are sort of, okay, uh, we'll just accept any traffic coming onto the network, and if there's a problem, we'll just drop it and let the sender send it again. But we also know that for especially storage protocols, and secondly, if we look at it from the application perspective, a mission or business critical application doesn't behave very well if it cannot rely on the storage transport to be deterministic. Yeah, and none of those applications particularly like the concept of a retry mechanism, right? That's a that's a, a painful yeah, scenario. Right? It is. So, but there's also the the you know you mentioned the security aspect and the fact that a, a hacker can't um, can't sniff the network, right? So, you know, um, one of the conversations that I think we get into a little bit is is um, you know that that we are not the most hacked protocol on the on the planet, as an example, right? But um, that that being said, you know this this idea that you that you said of the the point to point connectivity, right? Um, that that kind of that kind of lockdown um, is also um, applicable to the concept that that we don't do data transfer and management in the same connectivity. Correct. You talked about right our uh, what we classically call in band mm -hmm. uh, communication path is not used for uh, management either. And so there's full separation in, in that respect as well. And it's actually a great advantage because it, it means that when we then look at the management interface, it's fairly straightforward to lock it down mm -hmm. in a way that it's, uh, that I would say most organizations are very comfortable with the capabilities around locking down the management access. Uh, to the storage network because the hackers are coming for everybody, right? It's not it's not an if they're coming for you. It's a it's a when they're coming for you, right? That's that's not a well, nobody's going to be left alone. The the funny thing is when we say hackers, we often still have this picture in our head that it's someone sitting behind a laptop with a maybe a black cap or a, you know a hoodie on. But in reality, hackers are computer programs that are just hacking away, right? Mm -hmm. And so they're scanning the networks all the time. Uh, trying to find a breach, but it's not a, you know, it's at a different scale that any, uh, you know, college student or other student would sit and do in, in the dark hours.
Well, so I think I think that's a pretty significant list of of attributes that you've that you've laid out for you know why a mission critical environment or a business critical environment and you know why fiber channel is arguably the gold standard for storage connectivity um, in 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 data centers or that more than 95% of the global 2000 make use of fiber channel in their infrastructures for their mission critical or business business critical environments. So I appreciate your, your, your time and, and, and your background on that. And for those of you watching, you know, if you'd like more information around fiber channel sands by brocade, please feel free to visit the websites and, and have a look and thank you for sitting with us today.